Hello everybody, my name is Aesthetical Portal and welcome back to another YouTube video. Uh, in today's YouTube video we're going to be learning about how to use another plugin. This one is actually pretty simple to download and actually it's just a way with the click of a button. So, I already have this installed but I will give a link in the description. So, I'm going to go to my inventory. And once you download something, it will also be in your inventory. So I will go to plugins. And then I will then go to, sorry, my internet's kind of slow today. Camera light. So this is the plugin I wanted to show you guys today. So basically what this plugin does is pretty straightforward. Working in a dark area, use the camera light. So essentially what it is is a light bulb almost that is attached to your uh, studio camera so when you're not in the game the camera will be attached with the light so wherever you go it will instantaneously capture that field of view of light in a kind of certain area so if you don't have it installed already even though I do so this will turn up after this press install press open Roblox studio uh, and then I think yeah in a couple seconds it will come back up so let's make sure everything's going well it is so uh, we I have a ton of maps so I'm just gonna click on a random one uh, it doesn't really matter what we use for this. So, you know, actually this might be useful because this is a little structure I built and then I just stopped using it. So, I'm going to clear all of this out because we don't need any of this right now. So, we're in Roblox Studio now. I'm going to go to my Plugins tab, right? So... These are all of my plugins that I have installed. Um, we don't need to use this right now. Um, anyways, so as you can see, we downloaded the camera light. This will appear somewhere. I think I think you can manage the plugins and whatnot. If it's not enabled, uh, go to enable and it will automatically do that. You basically kind of know what I'm talking about. So, uh, what's cool about this plugin, as you can see, everything just lights up as I do that. Um, but I kind of want to give you a better example of what this thing does. So, I'm going to make a very basic structure, almost like a cave a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it's like as long as we create some sort of structure. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I want to create something, a space that's going to be relatively dark, right? I want to create something that's going to be hard to see in, right? So we're inserting kind of the roof here. So because the sun is up there, the light will be hitting at a direction on the side of the building. So, or cave, or whatever it is, um, Roblox kind of changed their uh, way you access materials. So, what you do now is you go to the enum, which is the list. What I usually do is uh, you can just look through here. Uh, let's try, find slate. I'm a bit rusty. All right, I haven't been doing this in a while, so. There, there we go. We got a little cave. I'm just going to name this cave right here. Um, it doesn't have to be a cave. You can have this whatever you want this to be. But essentially, it's very dark now, right? And I'm also going to show you a couple more things about why it's so important. Um... Yeah, it's still trying to load in the light. Usually takes time. So anyways, so this is a much darker area than over here. So 
if we go back into studio mode, this is not for in game, it's rather for uh, using lights while in studio. So this lights up the area. Uh, I can make like a little thing in here and I can see a lot better. Um, if it wasn't like that, it would probably be much harder to see. So it's very important to be able to see what you're doing. And if you don't, that's going to make it a lot more difficult. Obviously, you can see that red brick because it's the way the color is, it almost kind of reflects off of it. But you notice how the gray is very hard to see. If I turn this into a slate, it's material to slate, it's all, it almost, let's get rid of this, it almost kind of blends in the background, as you can see. So we don't really want that to happen when we're working in the dark. Um, oh, no, light toggle, that's similar, but I'll make a video on that soon, but that's different. So now we can kind of see what we're doing. Sorry, I have some pet rats. They're kind of fighting each other right now. Uh, if you can hear them in the background. Um, so lighting is a very important property. I think on my fourth episode, we talked about ambient lighting, all sorts of this. This is stuff you can mess with. These are the properties of lighting. Uh, if I change the ambient to black, notice how everything kind of all almost has a black hues before it's gray and now it's black you change it to say blue it'll have like a blue color to it uh that's good for like um being like if you're like underwater or something and if you want everything to look blue that's what that would be good for or it doesn't it can be any color you want that's a color three value which essentially just means colors that humans can see because we see three color cones but anyway uh brightness is essentially how bright the ambient map is so if i take it to zero everything will be very dark uh if i take it to five everything will be like really bright um i will kind of went over this uh, fog color uh this is essentially uh how far the fog away is there's always fog present but by default it's a hundred thousand so it's so far away you can't see it uh fog start is essentially uh the capacity of how much you see fog uh versus away from fog so as you can see there's almost like a little circle here uh and that goes away so you can see this little space here but that's not really what we're doing so and then we got time of day. We make this night. We'll make it even darker. Uh, geographic latitude is like, say you're like somewhere on the earth and I make this 30, it'll make the moon in a different spot. So uh, depending on where this is, the moon will be in a different area. Um, and obviously the sun will rise. But because we still have it on sorry, nighttime, uh, the, the sky is not blue because we have it as kind of still dark out. And even if you have it on day or night, it's always going to be there. Like the, the moon and the sun are always there. They just kind of switch positions. So it's kind of like in Minecraft, how the moon is kind of underneath the map almost. I don't know if I... Actually, I think it's dark because it kind of almost hides itself, can skews itself. Uh, but uh, yeah, shadow softness, that's just basically how you want... How kind of sharp the shadows want to look. Outdoor ambient is like how dark everything is. So now everything is just pitch black because essentially it's kind of the light that the moon would have or whatever that the moon would be casting off. Um, 
But yeah, this is a very important tool if you're making a horror game or uh, some sort of game that has a lot of darkness or uh, you want your game to have flashlights but you don't really have uh, anything to work with. Um, what I used to do before this, uh, before actually, I'll show you a good example of something that uh, what I would usually used to do is I would name this like light ball or something or or light sphere or whatever. You can give it any name you want, but uh, I would make it almost like an orb almost. Uh, let's go to neon. Some of these are hard to find because it's just so uh, point light. We insert a point light into it. Turn this off. Uh, brightness. You can control however you want that to be. Uh, if we want 30 range, that makes it really far. Shadows. Pretty self-explanatory. Cast shadows equals true means there's shadows. If there's not, it means there's no shadows. But actually, there's one more thing I want to show you in this tutorial, and that is technology. So technology is the lighting system that your game will be using. So there's four different light systems that currently exist. Uh, shadow map is allows for shadows, but it doesn't allow uh, in detail. Uh, so that's what we're currently right now. Voxel is basically the same thing, but instead it's more apparent to uh, light within the uh, game, not necessarily the ambient of the workspace. Um, I don't know if that made sense. Uh, but, okay, technology. Uh, compatibility is the old lighting system that Roblox used. Um, it's very bright, but it looks very flat. So, uh, if we go to future, uh, future is the most realistic looking light. So, uh, as you can see with this, future is uses the most kind of, uh, it uses the most memory. So it doesn't work very well on, uh, compute or sorry, phones and stuff that would have less data. But as you can see, the lighting can still apply to uh, the studio and not necessarily the game. So essentially, you can change the type of lighting and it will still affect kind of the way the game looks. And as you can tell, you can see how different the different modes look. So uh, yeah, that was a quick little... Actually, it wasn't that quick, but uh, but yeah, that was a nice little tutorial to show you guys uh, how to use uh, the camera light. Uh, this will be very important if when you're building uh, whatever, you know, building a game, uh, building a dark scene uh, or a cave like what I did. Um, and yeah, it's just it's a really powerful tool. I think is very simple, but it's powerful. Uh, to get the plugin, no, no scripting involved. You just, you just download it and you're good. So, um, yeah, if you guys liked the video, please subscribe. Uh, if you didn't dislike, uh, if you liked it, like. Uh, and uh, my name is Cynical Portal, and I'll see you guys later.